Well, we are into a brand new sermon series here in the month of February, and the title is Satan's Intruders. And Sunday I preached on enemies within and without, or outside and in. I can't remember how it was worded, but you get the point. And um, Russ has some thoughts for all of us to consider as we try to dig a little deeper into this matter of spiritual warfare and defeating our enemy, Satan. So take it away, Rush. Russ, not Rush. Rush Limbaugh is not I'm with not us anymore. <laughs> Do what? You'll try not to rush? Yes. Yeah. So, well, your message, obviously, as you mentioned, was about um, enemy attacking, Satan attacking and coming at us. And I thought it would be helpful if we could maybe have some discussions about um, how we protect ourselves against the enemy coming against us. So, obviously, this is throughout the Bible. It's one of the provisions God makes for us. Our main provision, I believe, is this. Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So basically, the Holy Spirit is our main protection. But as we discussed before in prior videos, having the Spirit is one thing. Walking in the Spirit is another. We've got to be walking with the Spirit. We've got to be learning to listen to learning to understand when the Spirit is speaking and learning to obey it and be obedient. And the main things this gives us in terms of spiritual attacks is, one, discernment. We will know through the Spirit when something is wrong. We will know if a thought coming into our head is coming from the enemy as opposed to coming from the Holy Spirit. If someone else comes to us being driven by the enemy, we will have the discernment to just say, this isn't right. An alarm bell will go off. And it gives us conviction, which convicts us of what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. We need to learn to listen to that. And something I think is worth throwing in there, that the conviction isn't a huge, loud voice as it is. It's something you tune into. But you need to bear in mind, the more you ignore that voice, the more you go ahead and just do what you want anyway, the quieter that voice is going to come to you. So... Get in the habit of listening to conviction and obeying conviction so you can hear it strongly. And another um, guide from 1 John 4, 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And I think you mentioned this um, verse in your uh, sermon. And what it's basically saying is to compare everything you come in contact with, you know, be it from others or within yourself, with the word of God. Does it line up with the word of God? Does it match God's character? Is it something he would approve of, something he would not approve of? And in addition to the, you know, the convictions and discernment of the Spirit, which should be our first line of defense, this tells us whether or not something is correct. If it's telling you to do something that scripture plainly says do not, then that's obviously a big alarm bell. And of course, we must know our scripture. We can't compare against the Word of God if we don't know the Word of God. Ephesians 6. Verses 10 to 11 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This sums up everything we've spoken about so far. You know, be strong in the Lord. You know, we've got to know his word. We've got to live and walk by the Spirit. And we've got to make our habitation with him. And take some time to look up the armor of God, the description of each piece of the armor in um I believe that's also in Ephesians. I can't remember off the top of my head. All the different weapons we get, like, you know, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword, of which is basically the word of God, for example, all these different tools that we have at our disposal for standing fast against and fighting off the devil. And finally, you know, take some time and read Psalm 91. This psalm really details God's protective love for us. You know, when we make our habitation with him, you know, what he does when we choose to live and walk and abide in him. But uh, overall, you know, your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the main tool against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Our flesh will always resist these things. Um, no matter how long we've been a Christian, the flesh will always push against utilizing these spiritual tools and walking in the spirit. I was just talking with someone today. The scriptures say that the flesh, our natural being, lusts against the spirit and spirit against the flesh. 
and uh, that battle never ends in this life. So I wish it would get easy. Uh, and, and I suppose there are times when it does get easier and times it gets harder. I, I certainly think that's true. Um, but it's always difficult to do right because we are fallen creatures. Yes, it is. But we can be victorious. We walk in the spirit. That's a great Galatians 5, 16 is so powerful. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So good stuff, Russ. Appreciate it.